Time to check out what's new on YouTube. Oh no! A new video from TTTE US episode reviews discussing realism! Oh, I'll bet he's going to nitpick his way through this video like the witty little nitpicker he is. And diss all the people who disagree with his reviews like the dirty little disser he is. Well, you know what? I can't bear to watch this! Oh well, I'll start ranting anyway. WAIT! <gasps> Please keep your hands off the keyboard and don't start typing any comments until the video has come to a complete stop. Thank you. This video was not made to try and diss any users and shove my opinions down other people's throats. Instead, I'm going to try and show this subject from my point of view. And why I have that point of view. Oh, alright. But, choose your words wisely, or else I'm going to make you the laughing stock of the entire internet! Yeah, good luck. Wow! Nothing, nothing! <laughs> Now, there are two ways of looking at realism in the show. Some could care less about realism, and if anyone says otherwise, they fly into a screaming rage. Others find realism an important factor in the show, and if anyone says otherwise, they are disgracing Audrey and his original works. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say anyone's disgracing Audrey or ranting, but I do believe realism is an important factor in the show. However, I've gotten a fair share of criticism for thinking so, most notably from my top 10 worst episodes of Thomas and Friends video. Old Reliable Edward, Spencer's VIP, and Three Steam Engines Gruff were the three main episodes everyone hated me for putting on the list. Signing Luna Productions posted the most insightful comment I've gotten on that video. However, I found it a little misguided. The thing about Shining Luna Productions' comment I found rather off-putting was, and I quote, Thomas is relatively realistic, but that's the key word, relatively. In other words, it doesn't need to be completely 100% realistic, because if it were, we'd have no story. In case you haven't noticed, realism isn't the only factor I depend on when critiquing the show. The other elements are character, continuity, cringe slash delight, and story. I'd have to be an absolute idiot to critique the show for realism alone. And these episodes weren't on the list just because of that. They were also there for lack of character and continuity, a surplus of cringe and laziness of story. At least in my opinion. They were not on the list to grab attention from the fandom in any kind of crazy stunts. Heck, when I first saw Three Steam Engines Gruff, I could hardly get through it without having to pause the video every minute. Now, just because there are moments when all five of the elements of which I consider when reviewing are of very poor quality in certain places, doesn't mean there are times I give realism an exception just because the other four elements are handled outstandingly well, such as Thomas and the Jet Engine, The Avenger Begins, Soldier's Legend of a Lost Treasure, etc. There could also be potential with a certain element of realism that has amazing potential and has never really been taken advantage of by the show. Involvement of human characters, particularly the driver's environment. Yes, there have been episodes centered around Sir Papa Matt and his family, and the engine's crew has been getting more attention in the recent years, particularly with Sailor John and Soldier's Legend of the Lost Treasure, and Season 20 in general. I really admire the writing team for actually using the crew. Now, I'm not asking for an episode centered around the crew, but both the engine and their crew. YouTube user Wild Norwester has shown multiple times in Sodor the Modern slash Early Years, stories can still be fun and entertaining even when bound by realism. My personal favorite episode of his series Sodor the Modern Years, Duty of Care, has shown an interesting conflict between Hugo and his fireman. What if there was an episode centered around a conflict like that in the actual show? For example, what if Sidney's driver was lazy and taking advantage of the fact the engine he's driving has short-term memory loss? What if Kevin's driver was just a confused teenager who's going through bad stuff in life and beating himself up for being a bad driver? Or, what if an engine found they had the ability to fully operate themselves without the help of their crew? The possibilities are endless! So rather than constrict story ideas, some elements of realism can help expand them. Another comment I've gotten was from a user who shall remain anonymous, who says, 
Why do you care so much about how real the TV series is? It's a children's show, for God's sake! Really? Just a kid show? Do you have any idea how ironically stupid and insulting that comment is? Not just to me, or yourself, but to the fandom as a whole? Let me ask you this. If it is just a kid show, why do you care so much about it? Is it some kind of stupid excuse to silence me? To give me to change my opinion? To make me feel humiliated? If you really feel like it's just a kid show, then why don't you feel humiliated? Just because it's intended for children doesn't mean adults or teenagers can't enjoy it. And if you think that, you're just as bad as this guy. As well as the people who made seasons 8 through 16 who thought, It's just a kid show! I don't have to put any effort into this because of that, and we could still make lots of money off this franchise. My day at Thomas has had some pretty mature themes throughout the franchise. Heck, even some more mature than those in shows made for adults. I'm not going to change my reasons just because of that petty little saying, it's a kid show. Anyone who says that is an insult to this community. I mean, what is this, 2010? It is just disgraceful, disgusting, despicable, and I won't stand for it. By the way, it's TV series, not TV series, and it's God's sake, not God's sake. Now. With that little rant out of the way, my reasoning behind it is because everybody has a weakness. Even Superman isn't perfect. Anyway, the point is, the franchise was made upon these rules. Again, there can be some exceptions, but one of the main reasons people got interested in the Railway series was not only because of the bright colors, enjoyable characters, and great storytelling, but also because it didn't try to pander to its audience. It didn't do any crazy stunts or give its characters cheesy body features or make them bland in any way. Even Audrey says so in multiple interviews. When I, when I was young, we used to, on Sundays, we used to have to read a horribly boring moral stories by good little boys and girls who, in our opinion, my brothers and I opinion, wanted kicking rather than... They were, so, they were so beastly good. And they were, they, and they, were, they were held up as moral examples. Well, my stories are, are nothing like that. The engines are, uh, have, uh, have human characteristics. Like children, faced with the prohibition, as, as every child does, they push it and push it and push it to see how far they can go without bringing trouble on themselves. And then they do find, they do find it, but in, in, my, in my engines, they may be punished, but they're not scrapped. They, they have to express sorrow and intention of amendment. And then they're brought, then they're, they're they're brought back into the into the family, so to speak. He kept it relatively realistic, got every engine a real-life counterpart, and even told the stories based off real-life events. It's why not only adults and teenagers, but railway staff and officials enjoyed the story. And they even got real-life engines, or railways based off real-life railways, featured in these stories. It, along with colorful visuals, interesting concepts, interesting characters, and amazing storytelling, is what makes Thomas stand out from his competitors. Again, I'm not trying to diss any of these guys in public, I just thought I could make a video centered around the subject of realism in the series, and in my reviews to help clear some of the confusion. There are episodes I hate that everybody loves, and there are episodes I love that everybody hates. There are things I nitpick about that others couldn't care less about, and there are things other people nitpick about that I couldn't care less about. I highly respect your opinions, even though I don't fully agree with them, but the reason I made this channel was to share my perspective on the show. I made it to praise the show for its good moments and to offer suggestions on how it could improve. Speaking of which, and I thank you all for giving reasonable feedback, especially in that video, even though some of your favorite episodes might have been in there. Who knows, maybe there can be a day where the whole community can respect each other's opinion, and maybe that can go on into the world. What's so funny? The community? 
respecting each other's opinion? Bruh, have you even been on Twitter lately? The day we start respecting each other's opinions is the day Mattel makes the wooden railway wax. <laughs> hey, one can hope. You know what? Forget about me making you the laughing stock of the entire internet. You're doing a pretty good job of it yourself. <laughs> one can only hope, my friends. One can only hope. Anyway, what's your thought on realism? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear some of your feedback on this. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.